Welcome, welcome, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, once again to my podcast, I am 24, this is my podcast, the best video gaming and sports podcast on the entire internet, 24's podcast, what a surprise, I'm back, I'm back, uh, haven't really, pause me there, <clears throat> haven't really been on the consistent upload trend, I want to be better, want to put out more content, just been a little bit busy. Haven't been talking that much about video games. I did watch Kansas City versus Houston, and my voice is a little bit shot right now, so I can't really, like, I'm, I'm not going to yell at this that much. But I'm pausing my music. It's a party. It's it's 24th podcast. Jesus Christ, I'm pausing. Sounds like a, mor- a mortrum or a cemetery in here. Jesus Christ. Anyways, um, I saw I, this randomly happened and appeared in my feed. Ubisoft Ford, the second event. I mean, apparently they're going to have another hour-long show to talk about what I, I don't really know. But we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll see what they have to show off. Ladies and gentlemen, got a good podcast for you coming up here. Right here, 24th Podcast. Cut the music off. Let's just get right into it because I'm, I just want to get this over with. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I'm a little bit tired. This is Ubisoft. Okay, let's just skip this. Actually, let me turn it down just a little bit. What is this? This actually kind of looks good, whatever it is, but it's probably a trailer. Please have gameplay. Gameplay. Please have gameplay. You're going to hear me say that a lot. Please have gameplay. Please have gameplay. Why don't you have gameplay? I'm not, by the way, I should have also mentioned this before I, like, just jumped right into it. Um, I'm not gonna be, like, I'm not gonna be as patient as I once was, where I was just like, I'm just gonna watch the entire freaking hour-long press conference and not fast-forward through any of it. It's like, well, you know, I've seen the last hour of Ubisoft Ford. I feel like I don't need to see, like, another one. I feel like I can just skip through it. This is a long ass trailer. Jesus Christ. What is this? Because this actually kind of looks cool. And some of what they've shown off on this trailer, whatever it is, it probably actually is gameplay. But I, like. Oh, it's another open world game. But some of this kind of looks like gameplay. Other parts of it definitely is a trailer. I just I just don't know really what I'm looking at right now. Immortals Phoenix Rising. December 3rd. Oh, it's coming out on everything. Yeah, like it looks cool. I'll, let me turn it up because I can't hear anything. Immortals Phoenix Rising. I hope you enjoyed our reveal video. I'm sure you noticed a lot of new things since we first teased the game, including a new name. It has a new game, or a new, not new game, new name? What was it called the last time you showed this game off? Immortals Phoenix Rising. Extra production time has allowed us to expand our vision and explore new opportunities beyond our initial plan. We felt the name Immortals Phoenix Rising better reflected this new experience. Today, we're incredibly excited to give you the first in-depth look at our world, hero, gameplay. and gameplay. Let's yes. dive in. Immortals Phoenix Rising is a third-person, open-world action-adventure game set in the fantastical landscape of Greek mythology. You'll play as Phoenix, a Greek warrior shipwrecked on the mysterious Golden Isle. Upon your arrival, you'll meet Hermes, one of the few remaining gods of Olympus. Hermes has heard of a prophecy that only you can save the Greek gods and reclaim their realm from Typhon, the deadliest titan in mythology. 
This entire epic story will be narrated by the Titan Prometheus and Zeus, the king of the gods, adding a unique commentary and perspective to this legendary tale. Okay. Before embarking on this perilous journey, you'll get to create your own phoenix. And as you progress, you'll find even more opportunities to customize your character by discovering legendary weapons, unique pieces of gear and cosmetics, and earning the god's blessings and mythical abilities that can turn the tide of battle. You'll need all the help you can get. I just realized what this game looks like. It looks like Breath of the Wild. Yeah, like it, like the climbing that that they showed off. Like that's it. It just looks like Breath of the Wild. Maybe not better or worse. Like I haven't seen the actual gameplay, but I was like the art style, parts of the combat, the um the the freaking exploration. I'm like, oh, this is Breath of the Wild. I was like, oh, there it is. Yeah. I was like, why do I like this game so much? It looks cool. Why do I like it so? Oh, it's because it looks like Breath of the Wild. To save the gods and defeat Typhon once and for all. On your journey to save the gods, you'll grow stronger and achieve new, incredible things, like gliding with the wings of Daedalus, to jump higher, fight while airborne, and glide freely in the open world. Yeah, that's Breath of the Wild. It's the glide, it's the glider in Breath of the Wild. Like, <laughs> it's exactly like, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, by the way, that they're copying mechanics from Breath of the Wild. In fact, it's actually kind of a good, like this doesn't look like a Ubisoft game at all. It looks better. Looks like an actually like very well developed video game that they spent a lot of time on, and also like like I, I'm surprised. And it's a new and original idea, kind of because again, it's Breath of the Wild. Like there's similar concepts, right? Where in Breath of the Wild, you like depending on what you do and how you do it, like the exploration in the game. Once you get past like essentially the first level, or not the first level, but like the first area of the map. You then get the uh, the glider from the former king of Hyrule. And then depending on what you do within the world, you can get the Master Sword and the Hylian Shield and different armor sets and things of that nature by, you know, accomplishing things within the game. And you can get special abilities and powers by, I forgot what the mechs were called, but by destroying the mechs and stuff like that, you get different, like, abilities and weapons and things of that nature. Like, Breath of the Wild. Off against dangerous mythical beasts like the giant cyclopses, flying harpies, and huge multi-armed hecatonkeries. Sorry if it's not like, by the way, the video quality isn't that good, but it, we'll I'll, we'll work with what I can, what I got. Excuse me. Harnessing the power of the gods to master a tactical and fast-paced, over-the-top combat system, and solving puzzles and challenges scattered throughout the world to help improve your powers. It's the shrines. It's the shrines in Breath of the Wild. Dude, like, yes, that, that this, this is Breath of the Wild. It looks exactly like it. It doesn't have a mini map, why not? But it has like a, a, a compass, like the, the UI looks very familiar. Maybe it's the, the Assassin's Creed Odyssey UI, I already hate, like, the, the frickin' compass. Why have a compass on a game that's this, like, specific? Or not a game, uh, on a map that's, like, very, very in-depth. I never understood this dumbass compass. I hate the compass. Get it off the screen. It's useless. Put on a mini-map. Put it right here. Move this up. Put the mini-map right here. Like, at least give me the option to have a mini-map. Like... Give me the option. If I can turn it off, I'll turn it off. If I can turn it on, I, I can turn it on. But, it, like, get this off. It's useless. What is this? What does the compass tell me? It tells me absolutely nothing. Get the compass off my screen. Put on a mini map so I can actually freaking learn the details of the map. Please. You'll also get to explore an epic, vibrant, and stylized open world filled with secrets, puzzles, and stories rooted in Greek mythology. Once a peaceful home to the gods of Olympus, the Golden Isle is now overrun by creatures of the underworld. To stand a chance against Typhon and his minions, you'll need to explore this mysterious land and become a mythical hero yourself. The world is divided in multiple regions, all ruled by a different god in need of your help. 
from the lush landscapes of Africa. It's like the four, like, heroes of Hyrule, where they had specific areas of the map that, oh my god, <laughs> it's so funny how much this is, like, derived from Breath of the Wild, to the point where it's kind of like, are you, are you sure this isn't plagiarizing, but it's like the four heroes of Hyrule where they were scattered across the map and they controlled a specific part of the map, and um, you had to help free their spirits and their mythical beasts from... Uh, Ganondorf's control to be able to reclaim Hyrule. It's literally the exact same thing. And again, I hate to constantly just compare it all the time to Breath of the Wild and say it's Breath of the Wild, it's Breath of the Wild, and Breath of the Wild without providing any more nuance to it. But again, it's very, very similar. Bagdi's planes to the mechanical world of Hephaestus's forge. Each region is packed with challenging battles, ancient puzzles, and secrets. Even, like, e even that climbing, it looks... Hold on. The climbing uncover. looks so similar. Each region is packed with challenging battles, ancient- Yeah, like, like, it's almost the same animations as Link. It's like, holy shit, like, how much, how much did you take, Ubisoft? Puzzles oh and secrets to uncover. You'll have the freedom to explore this entire open world as you wish, right from the beginning of your journey. Finally, stay with us for the post-show, where you'll get a look at new gameplay. We will watch that. We will watch the post show. We will watch the new game. I hope you enjoyed what you saw today. We can't wait for you to play Immortals Phoenix Rising. I There's a lot more to show it. before launch, so keep an eye out for further updates. I love it. See you all on December 3rd. December 3rd, Phoenix I'm Rising. I'm so excited to play no. this game. I've seen so many Stadia ads after this thing, and they're all bad. All the, st all the Stadia ads, it's like, you guys aren't even going to have Cyberpunk. When it comes out, it's like, that, that was like the whole point of Stadia. It's like, oh my god, we can play Cyberpunk 2077, but we can't actually play it upon release like literally everybody else. It's a world I just can't wait to explore. I'm going to fast forward through this. You get no love from me, Stadia. Hold on, let me mute. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that I skipped this. Okay. All right. More Immortals Phoenix Rising. Are they just going to show this game off? Not to say that it's a bad game at all. It's just, is this all you have to show off? By the way, I heard that Ubisoft had fired Ashraf Is Ismail, the creative director for the new Assassin's Creed game, a couple of months before launch. Um, I always think that that's a bad idea. Not a bad idea, but a bad sign for a video game. But it was off of good stuff like... Um, like, uh, like apparently he had used like his status at Ubisoft to like hit on like women and like seduce women and stuff like that. He's like, I'm Israf Ismail. I'm the creative director for Assassin's Creed Black Flag. And that, that's what get the girls going, you know? He's like, I, hey, I can, uh, get you a free, co <laughs> a free copy of Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Odyssey if you want one. What is this? Is this the same game? It looks like it. What is this? No, it's a different game. Hold on. I'll, I'll immediate it. Oh, no. It's Prince of Persia. I don't care. I played the first game, and I was like, this sucks. Do people actually like this game series, or is it just like... I don't know. I could. I, I was a kid when I played it, so maybe, maybe it's actually a good game, but I just didn't have the patience for. But as an adult, I don't have the patience for it either, so... Or was it the video game movie that I saw in compare in like combination with the um with with playing the game? I don't know. I don't really care. Which is why I'm fast forwarding through all of it. Jesus Christ, how much do you have to show? Alright, let's look at this. I think this is gonna be Oh no, this isn't what I thought it was gonna be. This is um the new BR game that they're that they released, I think, last month. I don't know what it's called. I completely forgot about it. I was completely excited about it, but I forgot about it. It didn't pick up like I thought it was going to pick up, if you want my honest opinion about it. It looked cool, but it also looked weird. Money. Which was like one of the things that I should have said like a month ago or two months ago. I was like, it looks interesting, but it also looks kind of weird. Nailed <laughs> 
Now they're showing like Twitch streamer highlights and things of that nature. Never felt like that in a VR game before, but I think I like it. Yeah. Yeah, new L. Dude, the quality is so bad. I can't even tell what I'm watching. Hold on. It's at 30. Put it on 1080p. Like, I can't even, I can usually tell, like, who the streamers are just based off of, like, their voices. Like, I know this is Myth, even though he has no hair anymore. Never but I was like, like, I can't tell who any of these people are. In a VR game before. But I think I like it. Yeah! <laughs> yep, <Yeah>, new L. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably just to, like, promo. Let me also kind of lower it again. Uh, this is probably to, like, promo their, um, their new season for the Battle Royale. This is essentially like every single advertisement ever for VR. That's a pretty nice shot. It sounds literally like the sniper shot that's going on right now. It sounds literally like the um the Fortnite sniper shot. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that? Nothing really to comment about this. It's just clips of streamers destroying, you know, in this game. Oh, man, that was so hectic. It's us. That's us! That's us! <laughs> Hyperscape. One big focus for the Hyperscape dev team is to regularly add gameplay content and features, keeping the game new and fresh week after week. I'm guessing that means like more guns, more cosmetic effects, balance changes, things of that nature that they're talking about or that they're going to talk about and items. So weapon changes, cosmetic effects, balance changes. Not weapon, not just weapon changes fall into balance changes. Wep new weapons, balance changes, maybe like differences to the map as well. Character balance balances, character introductions of heroes are like a, um, a part of the structure of the game. I'm not really sure. I've never played the game. Looks cool, but uh, I'm just gonna skip because uh, it like I I kind of knew about this. By the way, forgot to say this. I think two months ago in July, I want to. I think I just saw it. I want to see some Beyond Good and Evil. That game has been under development and has just had like no gameplay for it for like a year. Like I haven't. I I they had these um these things called space monkey updates or something like that where it was essentially dev interviews and i feel like the game has gone away from maybe what the primary focus of the game was where it was probably supposed to be this single player action adventure game in um in space and now it's turned into like an mmo light based game which i hate by the way like essentially it's the new avengers game it's the new gotham knights game for some weird reason, people are like, you know what? Let's just not create a good single-player game. Let's just create a multiplayer game that you can play with your friends and have additional content constantly be embedded into the game instead of actually having a very, very fun and entertaining single-player experience that we can potentially adapt into a multiplayer experience post-launch 
in a um in a as as a separate game within the same universe while you as the care not the character excuse me while you as the player live out your single player experience but also can potentially go on to this new multiplayer experience as well you know just a thought but we'll see i think this is beyond good and evil 2 it looks like it no beyond good and evil 2 has a bunch of animals in it this may or may not be it it has the cinematics that look like it but it may not be it Cara, você não vai entendendo. It's in another language. And it's not a CGI trailer. I thought it was a CGI trailer. It's not. It's a heartbeat, a pulse, a distant vibration. Oh, God. I already don't like this. It's a surge, a rush, the raw of a nation. It's nothing you could have predicted. Okay. Mute. Soccer. It's a soccer game. Is it Fez? What is this? What am I watching? What what advertisement are they hitting me with? Yeah, it's soccer. Or is it no, it's um Rainbow Six Siege. They're show they have an advertisement for Rainbow Six Siege, the World Cup, Jesus Christ. I thought that this was beyond good and evil too. Tony Parker, former San Antonio Spur. Why is he here? What? I gotta unmute this. Explain to them how special it is uh, to play for your country. Uh, it's very different than team playing, you know, like when you go to your country and- Dude, they got him to talk about it. What is that? Rainbow Six Siege World Cup. I don't know when that is. In the summer? But it's September. Hi, I'm Leroy, creative director on Rainbow Six Siege. Okay, don't care. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Don't care. I've never played Rainbow Six Siege. This is probably for a new hero, I'm guessing. I told you, I'm not going to watch like another hour of this. I've seen... Like I don't I don't want to watch another hour. I'm tired. I'm not up for it. My voice is shot. I was screaming at my television all day before long go, yesterday. We and for some weird reason, it just unmuted. Okay. And they have apparently they're gonna have a new Scott Pilgrim game. Hold on, I gotta watch this. I just saw the movie, by the way, it was fantastic. Oh, it's an arcade, 2D arcade side-scrolling game. But you know, that's cool. <laughs> I wish they had some of the original music from the movie, but I, I mean, they may not have been able to have cleared it. It kind of looks actually kind of fun. Turn it down. It actually does look kind of fun, but I don't really like knives chow. I was wondering who that was. I was like, who's that girl with the red hair? Because it's not his girlfriend. It's, it's not his <laughs> All right. It's time to check in on the dystopian police state of future London. Music is a huge cultural touchstone. And when you're working... Okay. Don't care. Like, I don't want to see the advertisement portion of the show. I just kind of want to see if you have any gameplay. And that's it. Who is that? Storm... Stormzy. I know some he looks like a rapper or a singer. He has a grill, I think, and pronounce the iron part of Watch Dogs Legion. You don't have about to have a Okay, he's an English rapper. Most definitely. 
Hold on, he's about to do something. Like I was making all of the noise in the big bird jacket, that's the fault to your boy. They rate me, that's so blatant. When it's all the future, I'm that's so raven. Cool. I like rapping, but uh, I don't like it enough to watch it. Like, I, I get what, the, I don't know what, I don't know what they're showing me. Are they showing me that they can recreate a rapper rapping in a video game? Like, I would hope that you would be able to do that. I mean, you can motion capture a lot of different shit in video games. Look out for Stor Stormzy's Fall on My Enemies mission in game on October 29th. I will not be looking out for it because I'm probably not going to buy this game. I was, but then I was like, it's coming out weeks before Cyberpunk 2077. I have no interest in this game. And it got delayed like three times. I used to, but I don't, I don't know, man. I just don't have any interest in it. Which is weird, because I used to have a lot, and then I was like, nah, I don't know, anymore. What do they all have in common? Any one of them could become your next playable hero. I don't even know if I should, like, listen to this without sound or with sound, because to be honest with you, like, I've seen so much gameplay for this game that I kind of know what I'm getting by now. So I don't even know if I need to have, like, the sound on to, to like, follow along with what the gameplay will be showing off. I am, by the way, happy of happy and excited for what they showed off in this conference. I'm happy for Phoenix Eternal Rising. I think that's what it's called. The the game, the Breath of the Wild Ubisoft game. But um I mean, some of this stuff is starting to put me to sleep. And help you save the city. Let's do some recruiting, shall we? Well, this one looks promising. Let's hack into his profile. Ah, oh, Dan, a getaway driver. He has a completely custom vehicle to make for a fast exit. And, ooh, an anti-chase ability, making him immune to those pesky chase drones. He can also hack vehicles to clear the way. That'll come in handy in Hot Pursuit. Well, let's see him in... Like, kind of my thing about this game was... I was watching, um, I think, the Ubisoft Ford a couple of months ago, and they were kind of breaking down this game, and I was like... It's cool that you can, like, go into certain places and recruit certain people for your team and, th and stuff like that. But I kind of, like, asked the question. I was like, well, okay, it's cool that you can do this. It's cool that you can get, like, different people that have different things. But my main question was, like, why couldn't I just, like, get one guy that could be my main guy and have everybody else be recruits? And I could use all of my recruits to help out the main guy instead of having to play all of my recruits. Excuse me. I mean, ju just saying. Like, I think the, the purpose of this game shouldn't be that you can play as a bunch of different people. I feel like the purpose of this game should be that a bunch of different people can help one person. While also semi being able to play as a bunch of people, you know? Or how about Eleanor? A hacker could always be useful. Uh, okay. Thanks to her viral hacking skill, her hacks propagate, affecting everything in the surrounding area. She also can electrify enemies with her shock hack and can steal access keys without needing to enter an enemy location. But it's like, again, it's like, the cool thing about this character is why couldn't I just call her up and, like, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, beep, like, call her up and be like, Hey, um, can you hack this thing and do this for me and I'll go in and, like, why, like, I get it, you're part of DedSec and you're, like, a branch off in New England, but it's, like, why couldn't you operate a little bit more like a team and form a team over, like, being an individual and going in individually, you know? It would be very, very hard to create, but I think it would be kind of worth it. Epic. Feeling a little more artsy in your approach? Teresa is a street artist. Her paintball gun gives her a non-lethal way to take out enemies, and she has paint bombs that can disorient them. But why would you like ah? Uh, yeah. It's like well, like why I get I get it. It's a cool weapon. It's a fun it weapon. But it's like why would you want to make the paintball like an actual weapon in the game? The paintball gun. 
And it doesn't seem like that effective. Please don't tell me there's levels in the game. Please don't tell me there's levels in the game. I don't think there is, but it's like... Okay, I don't... Yeah, I don't think there is, but it's like... Like... A paintball gun, really? And you don't even get to see the paint explode on the body. Like, unless I'm missing something here. Yeah. It's just like firing off BBs. Okay. So how do you convince the people of London to join your team? Talk to them and find out what it takes. Another question is, like, how many people can you have on your team? Can I have, like, over 100? Is it possible for me to, like, take over the majority of London with and, and recruit the majority of people in London to, like, be in DedSec? Or is it just, like, no, just, like, there's a cap to it, I guess. That's another question that I want an answer to. But I don't know if there actually is an answer to it. That your cause is worthy. Tell me what's wrong. I witnessed Albion doing some peak shit. These Clan Kelly guys, they've gone too bloody far. My friend's gone missing. Don't worry. Dead Sec will find them. After you help them, they will join your ranks and become the stars of your story. As you explore London, keep a lookout. Some of the most legendary recruits are not someone you just run into every day. Like this robotic beekeeper, Shelby. She can wreak havoc using her bee swarm. She also has a unique weapon, the Overcharger. Her suit gives her shock immunity, so she can take more damage from certain attacks. You can recruit... Another question is... Okay, so your characters have unique weapons, but can I just go to, like, a gun store and buy, like, a pistol or an assault rifle or, you know, like a bazooka? Is that in the game, or is there, like, there's just unique weapons and certain weapons that only characters can ha spe only specific characters can have, I guess? I don't know. Oh, bloody city, if you want. Doesn't mean... Okay, so they just confirmed it. He's like, you can recruit the whole bloody city if you want. Okay. Let me turn it up just a little bit. Should. Henry here's got low mobility. So he's not really fit for a mission that requires you to be nimble. And Mark, he's a hitman. Seems like the perfect recruit. But if you're approaching a stealth mission, maybe you should keep an eye out for another hitman whose attributes don't include hiccups. No matter who you recruit, you can specialize each individual to complement your playstyle by choosing one of the many unlockable weapons. There you go. So there's the upgrades and stuff like that that I I was like, is this actually a thing? Or like maybe not is this actually a thing? I was kinda worried about like, are you only going to have like one thing or one weapon or whatever? And it looks like they actually have a pretty unique upgrade and gadget system per character, which is kind of what I wanted. So yeah, that, that makes it actually kind of better and gadgets like the missile drum, the AR cloak, the spider butt. Yes, I did say spider butt. They've shown this off way too much. This is your team. Make it the way you like. Recruit skillful people adapted for various types of missions or go with weird. Apparently, there's also like an M16 agent, an MI6 or I think I don't know what it's called. They have, like, one of those agents that you can use that maybe not you can use, but you can recruit as well, which is kind of interesting. Some grannies. No one's here to judge. So get out in the streets and assemble your dream team. London is calling. Hello, everyone. My name is Latif. The Mute. Okay, so... Beyond the um, the little bit of upgrades and things of that nature that I saw, there's kind of really... Whoa, 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 whoa. Aiden Pierce is in this game. Let me rewind. Love and support since our announcement. Let me turn it up. And today, I'm happy to announce that an old friend is coming back. Fight back. Easy to say. Hard to do. Maybe I'm just what the city needs. Are you ready for me? Oh, that's actually kind of a cool car that he has. It's like the um the Quadra in Cyberpunk. London. 
You asked and he's back. Older, but not necessarily wiser. Aiden Pierce will be a fully playable character in Wash Dogs Legion as part of our post-launch plans. Found him! Check them out! And that's not all. We're gonna open up a whole new chapter in his story as part of our standalone DLC included in our season pass. Stay tuned and welcome to the Resistance. Everyone has a good reason to join the Resistance in Watch Dogs Legion. Mute. For 29. Mute. All right. Okay, we already saw this. Ugh. Oh yeah, I saw this. Um, or I didn't see it like fully. I saw like a clip of this. What is this? It's it's I I I heard it was like writers or something like that. I don't know what this is about. I'm not gonna watch the trailer for it. I feel like I have enough like I've watched enough trailers to not watch another trailer trailer. So I can tell you actually have gameplay. I'm kind of just disinterested. Gameplay. Like, I'll watch the gameplay, but you actually have to have gameplay for me to watch. Otherwise, I'm just like, deuces, I'm out. I, can, I, I just, I can't do this. I got a P2. I drank, like, I had cereal for breakfast and half a, a quarter, a third of a bottle almost. Not a third, like, two-thirds of a bottle of, like, sparkling ice and some water. It's like, dude, I got a pee so badly. All right. I just want a little bit of gameplay, which I guess this is kind of the gameplay that they have. This actually, like, it looks like um those snowboarding games. I, I I forgot what it was called, but it was it wasn't the Sean White one. It was it was something else. It was a snowboarding game that I used to play as a kid, where you would just go down a mountain, or like you had this entire mountain that you could go down. And you could like snowboard down it. Like it looks kind of, it looks kind of cool actually. And Ubisoft has been trying to replicate something like that for years, and they have just like failed miserably at it, pretty consistently actually. And this actually looks kind of good. Looks kind of good. I like the different ways, like the different bikes, the snowboard. There's apparently a jet pack as well. How does that factor into the game? Yeah, it looks cool. So they're talking about the different articles of the race, I'm guessing. Again, I don't have the sound on because I I don't really want the explana the explanation. This is this looks, by the way, this looks like gameplay, but this is one of those like weird circumstances where it's not raw gameplay it's kind of a cinematic version of it it's kind of like a uh an, an an in between between like gameplay and um and like trailer and promo material and stuff like that so it does look really really interesting i wish that it was way less like hey you know we're gonna show off this like the the cinematics and stuff like that and more like we're gonna show raw gameplay we're going to show, like, how this shit works. In not in between, but, like, realistically. Because it looks really, really cool. Hmm. There's also a lot of different, like, landscapes as well. There's, like, a desert where you can, um... Where you can do the squirrel diving thing... And then there's a part where you can snowboard and break literally the laws of physics and go up on a on a rail on a snowboard, which I kind of like. I kind of like that they're like, we don't really care what the laws of physics are. We're just going to break them and make sure that you have fun. I'm kind of interested in the game, actually, now. I'm interested to see what they're going to do. And also the cool, like, character designs and stuff like that that you have. Huh. Again, I want to see, like, actual gameplay, but I... Also, okay, so it's February, and it's going to be released on PS5 and PS4. All right. Hmm. That was okay. That was okay. All 
All right. We're going to watch Phoenix Rising, and then I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. everybody, and welcome to the Ubisoft Forward Post Show. I'm Mimi, community developer on Immortals Phoenix Rising. We know you've got a lot of questions for us, so reach out on social channels, and I'm going to tell you about it in a moment. But first... Let's jump into the game in an area dedicated to the god of blacksmiths, metalwork, and invention. This is the land of Ephaestus. The following in-game 4K capture has been edited for time. Okay. I will say this, though. There, like... I remember when I bought my PS4, it had actually collected dust for like a year because there were like no games for it off of release. The PS5 and the Xbox Series X are actually going to act like have good games or not. I shouldn't say good games, but they're going to have games on their consoles instead of it just being like, hey, we're just going to, you know, not have any gameplay or any games and stuff like that. We're going to have multiplayer games. We're going to have single player games. They're going to have games and they're also going to have exclusives. At least Sony is. Uh, Microsoft doesn't seem to have any exclusives right now besides the new Halo game that's been delayed, but I won't really get into that. Everyone, my name is Scott Phillips, game director on Immortals Phoenix Rising. Today, I'm incredibly excited to show you a sneak peek of our unique game. Immortals Phoenix Rising is an open world action adventure game with a fresh, stylized look and feel, heavily inspired by Greek mythology. And Breath of the Wild. It's a tale of the gods told by the gods themselves. On this epic journey, you'll play as Phoenix, a fully customizable Greek warrior. According to prophecy, Phoenix is the only one who can save the Greek gods from Typhon, the deadliest Titan of them all. To do this, Phoenix will explore the Golden Isle, a mysterious mythical island dedicated to the gods. Today, we join her as she arrives in Hephaestus' region to reignite his legendary forge to gain his assistance in the upcoming battle against... All right, so my computer, laptop, ran out of battery, and uh, I freaking had to re restart my computer, start open up OBS all over again, and had a freak... Like, we're, we're getting back into it. All right, sorry. My bad. It's my fault. Should have been aware. My fault. I apologize. All right. Let's get into this once again. Let's jump right into it. And let's finish off the Ubisoft Ford official live stream. I don't think they needed an hour for this. I think they should have just had, like, this. It's Phoenix Eternal Rising, Immortal Rising. ...battle against Typhon. Yeah. Two paths to relighting the Forge of Hephaestus lie before us. Oh, that's cool. I thought that when I first like looked at this, I thought that the um the map that they showed off was only just like, hold on. I thought that this was the entire map that you're going to be looking at, but obviously there's different regions on top of the region that you that you're in right now, which is kind of cool actually. We could challenge a Minotaur and his friends to unblock the air vents or reignite the hearths of the forge. Both will lead us to face a legendary automaton. Let's go to the forge. Wait, what? Why is there so much side quest content? Why wouldn't I just reignite the forge? I, I get that this will play into reigniting the forge, but why wouldn't you just, again, this like, this game had so much potential. I talk like it's weird. It's weird how much I talk about this. Where I'm like, I talked about it with Avengers, where I, the um, the Avengers game, where it was like it had so much potential, but it just like it just kind of fell short because of bureaucracy within the the, um, the company. Where it's like you know we have to have uh, it be a multiplayer game and it has to have all this additional content and things of that nature. It's like the cool thing about Breath of the Wild is that if you wanted to go and challenge Ganondorf. Ganondorf, excuse me, on the opening, like, as soon as you get the glider, you can. You'll lose, more likely than not, if it's your first time playing. But you can do that if you want to. Like, why why would I want to do the, all this additional side quest mission content when the objective is 
go reignite Hephaestus's forge. Instead of having to challenge the Minotaur to open up the vents, why wouldn't I just reignite the forge? Maybe it's just me. Like, I don't like busy work. I like, like, like have, if the busy, if, if there's busy work in the game, can you please make it interesting and not have it be so like, like, uh, like, like a run around, I guess. Or I have to like run around the main objective to essentially get to the main objective, I guess. Instead of just going straight towards it and being a little bit more direct with it, I guess. I don't know. Before we start our adventure, we'll use Farsight to scout the journey ahead. This yeah. rift seems... I, I shit you not, this is straight out of Breath of the Wild. Interesting. Let's make our way there. During her journey, Phoenix will reclaim legendary pieces of equipment, such as the wings of Daedalus seen here. These wings allow Phoenix to soar through the air. Your cool. flying companion, Phosphorus, will join Phoenix on her adventures as well. That More doesn't that look good. I was excited, like, I was excited for the game. I, like, that, the gliding looks super weird. And I just, I always question games that, like, I, like why wouldn't you just allow your character to fly? They have wings, right? Like, wings that are big enough to, like, carry them and stuff like that. Why? Like, I get why Breath of the Wild doesn't let you fly, but it's like, this is a pretty sizable and big map with different terrain, right? Like, this is, land isn't flat. It has, like, hills. It has valleys. It has, like, I mean, these are technically canyons, really. So, like, flying should be a key part of the game. And it has, like, this restrictive pattern to it. This restrictive, this restrictive excuse me, bar to it. That, you know, oh, you, like, like, I've always wondered why you would restrict the player's movement to, tra to traverse your map. Because if you restrict their movement, they don't want to do it. And they'll just fast travel around the map instead of, like, going and using your traversal system like this this hurts you as a developer more than it helps you when it comes to the design of your game when you're restricting the player movement by not allowing them to just fly all over the place but then the flying it looks super weird to me i think i said it doesn't look good and i think the reason why is that it's like like how your character moves in the air it's it's just weird and i get it they have a, a glide bar and stuff like that but it's just like they they went pretty much nowhere like this is the objective that they have to go to right here and i get it they they take a detour and stuff like that but it looks like they almost would have burned through their entire glide glide bar if they were to go to the objective, which is so weird to me. It's like, why wouldn't you just, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Comes later. In Immortals Phoenix Rising, combat is an acrobatic, airborne, over-the-top mythological experience. With her powers, Phoenix can dominate these soldiers. I like the combat. I like how easy it is. I like that you don't freaking have to have levels and that it's not, that it doesn't have like RPG mechanics in it. I like it a lot. I think they did a good job with it. Cyclops is another story. Boulders are his weapon of choice. Phoenix wields three legendary weapons, but her ultimate weapons are her godly abilities. That move was Athena's dash. And now for a bit of Ares' wrath. How does she does all? How does she do all this? Athena's dash. Do her ability? So she's kind of cycling through a lot of her abilities right now, and I'm kind of wondering, like, does her abilities have cooldown? This is probably like a dev kit version of the game, so they can pro probably do anything. But it doesn't look like her abilities have cooldowns, but I'm pretty sure they would. Maybe not a dev kit, just a demo of the game. Ouch! That's gotta hurt. Smashing the ground is also one of his favorite attacks. Let's take a health potion just to be safe. 
Another chain of ability attacks and he's knocked out. Stunning enemies provides an opportunity to get in a lot of hits to regenerate stamina. How do you stun an enemy? Ability attacks and he's knocked out. Stunning enemies provides an opportunity to get in a lot of hits to regenerate stamina. Now we'll finish the fight with Hephaestus' hammer. Boom! When enemies are defeated, they shed adamantine, used to upgrade Phoenix's gear. Now that the fight is done, we can make our way towards the rift. Rifts are tears in the veil to the underworld of Tartarus, Typhon's realm. Vaults of Tartarus challenge your wit, logic, and dexterity, and are also a place to combine your abilities and combat skills to solve puzzles and navigate your surroundings. Across dozens of vaults, you will face a huge variety of challenges, where you'll need to mix and match your weapons and skills to overcome them. So, shrines. This is very Legend of Zelda-esque. Not just Breath of the Wild, but just... Le again, it takes a lot of inspiration from that game series. Waiting at the not end just, of each... Not just Breath of the Wild. ...vault is a lightning bolt of Zeus. Using their legendary power, Phoenix can upgrade her stamina. Hidden chests lie in each vault. Uncover them to seal the rift. On the Golden Isle, Typhon's army lurks around every corner. And as we all know, where there are enemies, there's loot. Gliding with the wings of Daedalus is always a joy, but we need to keep an eye on how much stamina we're using. Since flying harpies can be a challenge to reach, we can use the bracers of Heracles to pull ourselves toward them to start the fight. Oops, Phoenix needs to be careful with her stamina here. Potion will do the trick. Oh, God. Like, I, 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 I kind of talked about it, or I thought about this at when I played Spider-Man. Right, the um the new Spider Man game, Spider Man PS4. Spider Man in the comics has web shooters that he makes, right? Not the web shooters that are in his arms, but web shooters that he actually makes. And in the video games, they have to kind of manage that. They have to manage like, okay, do we want to give him an unlimited amount of webbing, or do we, you know, do we like? want to have him be limited so what the developer insomnia kind of did as as a kind of i don't want to say compromise but kind of as a balance of the game is you know when you're traversing the map you have a unlimited amount of web so you don't just have to like refill up your web shooters as you're swinging around the city but they also have a limited amount of webbing when you're fighting right and my point is is that this is where you could implement a similar um, design into your game where when you traverse the game you have an unlimited amount of flight but when you're fighting you have a limited amount of flight so maybe you would have to change some combos maybe like the game doesn't have to be this restrictive when it comes to the to the aerial aspect of the game to to such an extent that you have to like drink a potion to refill your stamina bar and it's like like if like i i i i don't know why you would i don't know why you would be so heavy-handed in the restrictions of the game and i talked about this with anthem anthem one of the best gameplay mechanics in anthem that i saw before the game was released was the flying and ea found a way to restrict it and it's like why what's the point what does this accomplish because it doesn't really make... It makes the game not even harder, but just unnaturally longer. And now on to the next one. And more obnoxious. Because it's like, oh wait, now I have to freaking manage my like stamina Cyclops, bar. Minotaurs also love to use the environment to attack Phoenix. But with Heracles' bracers, we can grab them and throw them right back. He'll also try to hit you with those nasty horns or slash you with his claws. 
perfect dodges will grant Phoenix some precious extra time. Ouch, the Minotaur's charge can hit pretty hard. Fortunately, Phoenix has some health potions. <laughs> it's like, it's like every single time something happens in the game, he's like, you know what? Let's take a potion. Let's take a, po <laughs> let's take a potion. Fortunately, she has a stamina potion. Fortunately, she has another health potion. Jesus few Christ. More perfect I don't dog. remember, like, I don't remember in Breath of the Wild, like, taking a fuck ton of potions. Oh, yeah, because we had food in the game. Now I remember. Jesus Christ. Phoenix will land some quick attacks. But let's finish this fight with the help of our companion, Phosphorus, to dive bomb the Minotaur. That's a let's dive see bomb? What they were guarding. Really? Oh, 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 okay, okay. The Golden Isle is filled with epic scale puzzles inspired by Greek mythology. My question is, so they talk about how um, there's loot where enemies are. What exactly is the loot and how does it benefit your character and why I should go after it? Each trial will require you to discover, understand, and then solve. Why should I go after it? The challenge. These trials are found scattered across the entire world, just waiting to be found. When completed, you'll earn coins of Charon to be used in upgrading Phoenix's skills and abilities. Mm. Now more, that we've put more ways of traversing the map. Spider-Man only has one. He just freaking web swings. This character, Phoenix, glides and rides horses. It's like, well, why, why wouldn't I want to glide? Why wouldn't, why wouldn't you just focus on giving the character the ability to fly? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. Our wits to the test. Let's move on to the next part of our quest. The first step to relighting the forge is to destroy some of the corruption that Typhon has spread over the Golden Isle. Okay. With the corruption destroyed, we can use Heracles' strength to grab some coal and put it in the hearth to start the fire. I'm so confused. Is this like, is this a part of the quest or is this the main quest for restarting the fire? Because there's a bunch of other quests that you, that they were also doing before this quest that I, 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 I don't know. This is just one of many ways to light the coal on fire. The hearth is now relit. But since a battle with a legendary automaton awaits us at the forge, let's head to our base of operations for some upgrades. Oh cool, there's there's like a lot of different places where you can go to to free the gods of Olympus or on the isle. I don't know. This is the Hall of the Gods. It is where Phoenix will reunite the gods to defeat Typhon. All of Phoenix's progression and customization takes place in this central hub. At the River Styx Cistern, we'll spend coins of Charon to upgrade Hephaestus's hammer ability. Perfect for the fight to come. On her journey to defeat Typhon, Phoenix will need all of the upgrades she can get. I love how she's working out, but has no definition to. She's just like, she's pumping iron. And she's like, I'm going to get swole. I'm going to get strong. And she doesn't have any definition. No mass, no moss. With our new ability, restocked potions, and increased health and stamina, we're ready for this final fight. Built by Hephaestus, but corrupted by Typhon, this automaton can unleash lasers on Phoenix. To start things off right, 
Let's use an attack potion to enhance Phoenix's weapons and abilities. Now they're potion. Her for the rest of the fight. Athena's dash and Ares's wrath are all good choices here. The automaton's uppercut is quite deadly, but this combo will knock him right out. Let's finish him off with our newly acquired ability. And he's history. All right. Power has been restored to the forge. Hephaestus' workshop is roaring back to life. Phoenix's job is done. That's why. It seems Typhon has other plans. We're seeing Typhon's rage, which means he sent a corrupted fallen hero to track Phoenix down. This walkthrough was just a preview of the amazing journey Phoenix will experience in Immortals Phoenix Rising. More trials, more larger than life monsters, and more adventures await you on the Golden Isle. Thank you for watching. See you December 3rd. I may maybe see. We'll see you on December 3rd. Um, I'll just let it run out. Um you know, I talk about it all the time with Cyberpunk 2077 where it's like you usually don't see a whole lot of gameplay from a game because usually it can disappoint you. Usually it doesn't look and play as good as you actually think it is. And gameplay is kind of like the easiest way to tell if a game is like legit or not. I was I'm I was excited when I first saw it. I'm less excited for it now. I feel like they're not focusing on the right things with that game in some instances. You know, I talked a lot about the flying, but aspects of the combat, for example, I really, really like with some of the lower tier enemies and even some of the higher tier enemies as well. But some of the game design, like with the, um, the missions and the side quest being kind of like being somewhat filler and also... I, I'm not sure how exactly. Maybe I'm missing something here. Maybe it's because I'm stupidly tired. But I feel I feel like I'm missing something here with Hephaestus's forge and like how how you unlock him as a character and how you get him to um to restart his forge and stuff like that. I feel like I'm definitely missing something there. Initial first impressions about that game that I kind of thought was kind of weird. Um, I think I covered all my bases. Oh yeah, loot. How how does loot play into the game? Not just like upgrades for your character and their special abilities, but also for um like for your weapons and for your armor and stuff like that. How does that apply to your character? I think is another thing. But I mean, all of that can be covered when the game is actually going to start out or not start out but be released and they don't necessarily need to address all that stuff. Overall, I liked some of what they've seen. I not seen, but showed off. But I've also disliked other things that they've showed off. But, you know, they have no time. <laughs> the game's going to be out in three months, which is, like, no time at all. They, can, they can't change the core mechanics of their game. You know, it's, it's impossible. Um, but, yeah, that's it. This has been 24's podcast, the best video gaming and sports podcast on the entire internet. I'm very tired. I'm going to take a nap. Um... I'll see you next time.